Good afternoon, colleagues. My presentation will be very, very brief. I'm just here with uh, two important messages. Uh, number one, as you have heard from our colleagues from Zambia, from the Nigeria, Haiti, Zanzibar is also very committed for the elimination of cholera. So we are using that as an entry point to also strengthen the surveillance system. The second point is uh, we should use or strengthen the system if you want to make a difference in the sustainable kind of investment. Um, different examples like uh, the laboratory, the packaging, the SOPs. It's not only for cholera. If it is not strong enough to handle all infectious diseases, cholera will also suffer. So uh, whatever we do, let's see it from strengthening the system. Uh, can you go back? How do, is it me who is touching? Sorry. So that just to, uh, this will be the outline of my presentation. Uh, background, as you know, uh, Zanzibar, the longest history is, uh, I don't know if you read the book by Princess Salma. She is the daughter of the Sultan of Oman, who was ruling Zanzibar a long time ago. And Princess Selma, she just escaped from Zanzibar, married to a German guy, and then she wrote a book. And in that book, she explained that her mother died due to cholera when she was 15. So this is the history that we have, at least a documented kind of history about uh, cholera in Zanzibar. But since 1978, we had 17 outbreaks. So now, the last one was in 2016, uh, 17, uh, which uh, really had uh, 346, 336 cases and four days. If you compare it to 2015, 16, we had about 4,000 cases and 68 days. So what we did as an advocacy is, uh, to be honest, cholera, it was my first experience in Zanzibar. My background was on maternal and child health. But when I saw people suffering from cholera, really it became my personal commitment to do something. It's not a pleasant disease. And it is the tip of the iceberg. We have so many waterborne diseases which are happening every day. Uh, so since then, we met with the president. We told him we have a challenge. This situation is considered as a health problem and other sectors are not involved. This way, we cannot control cholera. The next day, he went and visited the CTC and at 8 o'clock, he called five ministers and he instructed them to work daily and brief him every 6 o'clock in the evening what they are doing to control cholera. In three weeks' time, we have managed to control cholera. Now, for the last 21 months, we don't have cholera. It did not stop there. So he instructed the ministry to work with other sectors and develop a multi-sectoral elimination plan. So we have a service delivery system which is very good in terms of physical access. Zanzibar has a very good coverage. We have more than now 168 primary <laughs> health care. Uh, this is the distribution of the health facilities. So if you link it to surveillance, we have a very good coverage in terms of health facilities. But unless you have also a community component, Definitely, the health system might miss a lot of disease and disease conditions, including cholera. 
So this is the Zanzibar cholera elimination plan. It has three pillars, the enabling environment, prevention and response. The details, I can share the document. And this is the cholera elimination coordination structure. Initially, it was under the Ministry of Health, but we have advocated that it should be at the higher authority if you want to make a difference. Because other sectors cannot listen to another sector. That we have seen it during the outbreak. So it is the second vice president office who coordinates now this multi-sectoral coordination. But the Minister of Health is a technical arm in that, uh, in that coordination structure. So surveillance, we have the integrated disease surveillance, which was adopted in 2010. And we have a lot of disease-specific program-specific surveillance system. And I tell you, this is compromising the national system. So now we are working with different programs. How can we work together and interface between the national and the program specific so that we have one robust health information system? Um, we have also an informal surveillance, like what I mentioned the first day, if you remember. Uh, we have the formal health system information system. And under the local government, we have what we call the security and the disaster management plan. In terms of surveillance in the community, that is a more effective one. So this is how it happens. Um, for, uh, no, sorry. So the, uh, we have the community health custodians at the community level. So with the help of UNICEF also, we have trained 1,700 1, community health volunteers. These are now the information officers at the community level, which they report to the nearest health facility, goes to the district, to the regional, and national health information system. When you see this, which is under the second vice president office, they have village disaster management committee, or they call it also security committee, which includes health security. And then Shehia is the next level, district, regional, national. So this national, when they get this information, which is very effective, they also inform the Minister of Health. For example, the one I mentioned in uh, Pemba about uh, poisoning of uh, some family members by turtle. The Minister of Health did not pick it up. It is this structure which they know through their administration structures and then inform the ministry and then we immediately deployed a rapid response team to investigate and come back to give us the information. So what I'm emphasizing here is I think we should also use the opportunity other structures which are already there to get information and to respond quickly to avoid uh, high fatality rate. This is the infectious disease weekly end report, what we call IDWE, just for your information. And cholera is one of the notifiable diseases. Every week we get a zero report, but if there is an outbreak, definitely we have also a, a, a mechanism of getting the information immediately. So this we receive, WHO also receives this on a weekly basis. The cholera analysis when we have uh, confirmed cholera, this is also the uh, line list with the details, including telephone number, village, and what. But usually, it is not complete. That is a challenge that we have. People are overwhelmed with so many information, so we see a lot of incompleteness. But it, it, it exists. This is a DES, DES investigation form. So I think the key issues and challenges that we have, inadequate human and financial investment for surveillance, and usually donor supported kind of surveillance system. When the project ends, it just naturally dies. I can give you an example. Danida was heavily inv investing on this health information system. When the project ended, 
we see now a challenge, uh, even to pay for uh, internet connectivity and all that, which is very minimal. So we are advocating that the government should also allocate resources on this. Ad hoc and inconsistent surveillance technical working group. We have a working group uh, which looks cholera and other broader disease issues, but uh, they don't meet regularly. And then one of my colleagues also from the countries mentioned about absence of emergency operation center. We don't have it, but still now we are uh, negotiating with the ministry to have this uh, EOC. Unst unsustainable infrastructure, internet and the software for data collection and management. SMS-based information sharing, like uh, especially in the health facilities, they send by SMS. And that is not really sustainable. If they don't have credits, they cannot even send the information. EIDSR, which was supported also by WHO to avoid this kind of uh, ad hoc kind of reporting, it worked very well for a few weeks, and the completeness, uh, timeliness has increased very heavily. Now, for some reason, it is not working. So we have to investigate. We are going to send a team to see what went wrong. What we heard from the national system is they forgot their password because everybody has a password to, to log in. It doesn't seem uh, <laughs> reasonable. Uh, so measures to address our challenges, capacity building through mentorship and on-job training by deploying field epidemiologists. We call them, but it is not effective. Workshops, they are expensive. You deploy them from the workplace. Now what we are doing is to deploy people to go and work with them. And that, we found it very effective. Convene and support regular meeting, subgroups, proposal for creation of EOC through the, what do you call the ECHO or something. There is an emergency which we are trying to approach for establishing this. And advocacy for Institute of HMIS experts. We have very good experts which support other countries but for some reason, they are not in the ministry. And uh, they, were, uh, they had like a top-up from, from the Danish government. Now how can we reinstitute that? Because unless we support temporarily until we have a lasting solution, this uh, uh, health information system will suffer. And then develop sub development of policy guidelines on HMIS. This is very crucial as well. Uh, so that everybody adheres, that we have to strengthen the national system instead of program-specific, disease-specific. I uh, think in conclusion, I can tell you that we are working, uh, and uh, surveillance is one of the strongest components of the elimination plan, but in the context of strengthening the entire system. And uh, this is uh, our new WHO representative, she came recently, and this is the president of Zanzibar. Uh, we met him January this year, I'm taking a note, and one of the agenda items was cholera elimination. Yes, to finalize and endorse the cholera elimination plan. Thank you very much.